Fellini said the following about his films in an interview. I don't want to make movies to be understood. The whole question of intelligibility seems to me a kind of aristocratic game, like heirs gossiping at a funeral. All I want in my movies is a real man, a man who lives an ordinary life, who worries about his money, his wife, his religion, his work. You know what I don't understand? When people say, they don't understand. You are watching the story of a man who tells you about his work, his mistresses, his troubles, his relationship with God. There is nothing to understand. You have to listen and intuit whether this man's problems are your problems or not. That's all. Shall we reach out to companies? It is nothing. It is not in Rome. It is in Florence. Uh, oh. In general about the movie La Dolce Vita, Fellini, who transforms it into an intense combination of the collapse of the ruling class and the horrible violence this collapse involves, also measures the social tension of the 60s with this aggressive attitude and presents the result as a disaster. At the time, the film exploded like a bomb both in leftist circles and in church circles, which perceived it as a blasphemy against them, and on the right. From a contemporary perspective, it also hints at the incredible rise of television and the media with astonishing skill. La Dolce Vita's strength lies in its mixture of realist and romantic qualities. The themes of the film are disillusionment, unrealized dreams and despair. Marcello, come here. Hurry up. The story of Marcello, a young tabloid journalist who, despite his limited intellectual background, suddenly finds himself in the sophistication of high society in Rome, where he comes from a middle-class provincial family, and who, along with the people he is with, becomes corrupt and decays, is told over seven long nights, as he drifts from one woman to another, from nightclubs to wild parties on the Via Veneto, the heart of high society. At the opening of the movie, we see a statue of Jesus Christ, suspended from a helicopter and hovering over Rome. Marcello is also in the helicopter and tries to get the number of women sunbathing on a building. In the last scene of the movie, fishermen catch a large stingray, and it stands with its eyes wide open, looking up at the people. The fish is one of the most common symbols for Jesus Christ. Considering the opening and closing scenes of the movie, the statue in the first scene and the fish in the last scene can be read as references to Jesus Christ and therefore to religion. The fact that the statue in the first scene is carried in a helicopter and looks down on the city is a reference to the fact that people seem to cherish religion and spare no expense for it. The fact that Marcello and his friends try to get women's numbers while in the helicopter is a reference to the fact that people who seem to cherish religion are actually only after showing off. Marcello meets a young girl working as a waitress in a beach cafe where he goes to write. This girl is pure, immaculate, and full of excitement for the future, unpolluted. Marcello compares her face to the statues of angels. At the end of the movie, on the beach, the girl sees Marcello again. From a distance, she gestures to Marcello, telling him that they have met before. However, there is a small lake between them, and Marcello cannot understand her because of the waves and human voices. He raises both hands and makes a gesture that means, what can I do? At this moment, Marcello's face shows helplessness in all its nakedness. This scene, like the whole movie, is full of symbols. The innocent girl symbolizes the path to happiness. Marcello has met purity, the path that will lead him to happiness. 
but by the end of the movie he is unable to remember that purity. The episodes don't seem to be connected to each other. It is as if you are watching a circus. Fellini breaks the audience's classical habit of watching a movie, leaving them in a constant state of alienation. But after the movie is over, the pieces come together, and you can make sense of it. In a way, La Dolce Vita is about the desperate search for happiness. But every moment you can't reach it, you sink deeper and deeper into yourself.